This is the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam, a new podcast for engaged couples concerned about wedding planning and family expectations but want a stress-free, fun, and unforgettable wedding. Hi, I'm Sal from After Hours Events of New England. I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions DJ Service. Welcome to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Why is drone photography important in today's wedding filmmaking? Why is weather so important? Why is FAA approval important? Why is liability insurance important? After listening to this edition of Stress-Free Wedding Planning, you're going to know and understand the answer to those questions. We'll talk to Carson Fitzner, a wedding filmmaker and drone operator. By the time this edition is over, you'll know how drone photography will make a difference on your wedding day. With over 80 years of combined wedding experience and insider information, this is Stress-Free Wedding Planning with your hosts, Sal and Sam, a new podcast for engaged couples who are stressed about wedding planning and family expectations, but want to have a fun wedding. Listen now for revealing wedding insider secrets, tips, and strategy or lesson that you'll be able to implement for a stress-free wedding. Information that you just can't miss and may just change your life. Take the journey with us from worry and concern to a stress-free and unforgettable wedding day. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam. Welcome to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. This is Sam. And this is Sal from After Hours Events. And we have a very special guest today. Sir, would you please introduce yourself? (laughs) Hey, how's it going? My name is Carson Fitzner. I'm the owner of Fitzner Productions, LLC. And you've done the embarrassing task of returning to us for another interview. I'm glad to be back. I Why love would it. you do such a thing? You know, I had such a good time the last time. I, I had to come back. <laughs> that is so awesome. We're going to talk about a subject that I find fascinating because I'm, I'm into this sort of stuff. And it's what you need to know about drone wedding photography. So I'm going to ask you pointedly here, Carson, mm-hmm. why is drone photography important in today's wedding filmmaking? So I think we mentioned it on the, the last episode. Our My company's primary thing is cinematic highlight tapes, and we really want to tell that story. And I think with the introduction of drones and drone videography and photography, you get that, that new perspective that adds just a, a different angle to the day that you never get to see before. And again, with the cinematics and the storytelling, it just makes your video just seem that much more movie-like, you know? Right. So it, for people that have been living on another planet for the last 20 years, what is a drone? So a drone, uh, it's just, you know, a camera on a flying device. It's just another camera that you get to use and film for the day. And the great thing is, there's no wires. You're using like a joystick to, exactly. to run it? Exactly. Yeah. So you, you're not actually using a joystick to, to work the camera, are you? Uh, so there is control of the camera. So my drone, I use a DJI Mavic 3, and everything's wired through GPS signals. So I use my phone on an app that's connected to my controller, and then uh, we can fly the drone up. And it has the control where you can like pan up and down uh, for the camera. And then these drones nowadays basically like fly themselves. You can point your subject to where you want it to go and it'll just follow you. It will track the, oh, yeah. the, the, the couple yep. and, and you don't have to do anything. No. So it could do like circles. You can pinpoint from start to stop. For example, if you say you're on a, apart from weddings, if you're on a bike and you wanted it to fly right behind you and follow you yeah. it can follow you for 30 to 40 That's minutes however crazy long. yeah <laughs> you obviously have to have some knowledge of all this technology is there any special licensing that you should have when you're using a drone for safety reasons absolutely so uh if you're using a drone for commercial use you need to have an ffa part 107 uh, remote pilots license for more information you kind of go online search up uh, certification for drone commercial use and basically you you take a test and then you have to get it registered and you're all set it, it really takes maybe a month or two to go through the process but it's i cannot stress it enough so important if you're using it for commercial use great great so we have carson fitzner with here uh, here with us today and uh i want to let everyone know your social media information yeah so you can find us at fitzner productions llc on facebook again fitzner productions llc on facebook Or you can find us on Instagram. We'll keep all of our posts updated there at Fitzner Productions on Instagram. And give us a little refresher course on what your company does. Yep. So our company is primarily wedding videography. Um, We do other events. We do corporate, commercial, but primarily weddings. And our company focused on cinematic storytelling for wedding days. And that's our big focus. So we were talking about uh, the FAA. And I'm very curious about this. Since you have a license... 
doesn't everybody flying a drone have a license? They should. You know, with the introductions of any new technology, we're talking about drones here, and, you know, they've made a lot of strides in the past few years. And from that, there's not much regulation. Uh, So as we go through the years, you're going to see more regulation on it. They're going to be really honing in on who has licenses. And you definitely want to be ahead of the curve before they... They start putting all those regulations on. For me personally, I think the best rule of thumb when you're flying a drone is just to be as safe as possible. For example, yesterday I was flying my drone at a brewery. Drones are exciting. They're cool. These two kids come over. They're four or six years old. um, And they're asking me questions about the drone. It's in the air. They're they're looking at my controller. They're having a good time. But if you don't understand how dangerous drones can be, that fun kind of takes over and, you know, clouds your judgment. So when the drone's coming down and I'm landing it, you know, I tell the kids, go back to your parents, stand behind that tree. So having that understanding of how dangerous it can be helps, you know, in the long run when you're when you're dealing with those types of people or different environments like that. So I assume there's liability issues. So do you have to have liability insurance for this? Yeah. So for me, I have uh, my just company insurance and it covers my drone. Having the license and then registration is the primary thing you need. And then insurance, whether it's general liability for your company or personal, then you can get that as well. So... That's two questions that uh, engaged couples should ask Mm -hmm. so that they're not stressed out at their wedding is, A, do you have an FAA license? And there's a specific number you mentioned. Yeah, so it's uh, part 107, and then it's for the remote pilot's license. Okay, so that's very important that you have that. And the second thing is liability insurance. Absolutely. Because those two things are a benefit of hiring a filmmaker or a videographer that has a drone. Yeah, Correct. again, it's one of those things where you can get away with not having the license. You could get away with not having the insurance, but when it comes down to it and you're a week away from your wedding day and the venue asks, can we get the insurance from your videographer? Can we get their information for their licensing if they're doing the drone? Right. It takes a few weeks to get the insurance. It takes a few months to get your license. Uh, at that point, it's too late. And then again, you have unneeded stress that you could have avoided if you just asked for the license. Excellent. Perfect. I, l- I love that. Early planning makes the best planning. Yep. How long does it take to incorporate that into your regular wedding video? That's a great question. Um, I know. I ask great questions. That's a, that's a great question. <laughs> the drone flight time is 45 minutes for, for my personal drone. And the way that we use drones in our day-to-day is to get those cinematic shots of the venue and just add that different angle. So what we like to do is when we first get on site, if the bride's going to be ready um, or the couple's going to be ready by noon, We'll get there at 11 and take 30 minutes before we even start to get that those extra shots. That way it's not in the way during the day and you just get it out of the way um, and you have those already secured to start the film. And part of my research I did for this, that you can't just get up and fly the, the drone. Wind has a very big impact on whether you can fly that day or not, right? There's a lot of different things that you have to do for like pre-flight inspection. Um, wind, weather conditions, clouds... Those are all things you need to um, take into account before you set off your uh, your drone. Another thing to look out for and for couples to be aware of is there's different flight restrictions for different areas and air classes. Check with your videographer or your venue of what airspace they're in because some venues might be closer to airports and you're not allowed to fly there. Uh, or even a military um, base, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like different spaces you have to check beforehand. Most things, you know, venues are in the woods or... You know, they're not close to airports, but it's definitely something you have to, to look out for before putting your drone up. We're talking to Carson Fitzner, and we're going to be back in just a few to answer some more questions. What you need to do and what you need to ask before you hire a drone filmmaker or photographer. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Wedding Tip Wednesday is brought to you by Emerge Cosmetics. Are you ready to emerge? A new line of luxurious lipsticks and lip glosses created with the intention of empowerment and coming into who you truly are. Strong, beautiful, and confident. Use coupon code EBI10 at shopemergecosmetics.com for an instant 10% discount. That's coupon code EBI10 for 10% discount at shopemergecosmetics.com. Emerge as the true you. On this Wedding Tip Wednesday... Get it in writing. Get written costs from all your vendors and have them create a contract. Yes, a contract. All reputable vendors will be happy to do this for you. Prices can and do change unexpectedly, particularly in an unsure economy like we have today. Also, be sure to find out the policy for your deposits or down payments up front if the business fails or you cancel. So a contract is 
is not just to be there to help you. It also helps the company. You have an actual agreement in writing what exactly you are going to get. And that's important. Your contract should have every detail. And one thing that a lot of clients come back and ask me, I don't actually spell it out in my contract, but is an addendum. So if, for instance, I'm providing uh, lighting and they want extra lighting or they want a monogram or something, I will add an addendum to the contract that spells out each item of lighting that I'm going to be bringing. 12 fixtures, monogram this, or a lighting for outside. All those extras obviously can't fit into a boilerplate template, but they can be added as an addendum. That is also part of your contract. And very important. So there's no disagreement later. Yes. Uh, I didn't get what I really wanted. Yep. Well, there it is in writing. <laughs> it's all in the contract view. So get it in writing. Make sure you get a contract from every wedding vendor. Wedding Tip Wednesday is available on the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group page every Wednesday. Join the group for free. You're not the same as the person next to you. You dress to reflect your personality. You enjoy customizing your drink at the coffee shop. Even your pet's collars match at least two pairs of your pants. It's only natural that your wedding would showcase your unique touch. After Hours Events of New England gets this. They like to give their clients full artistic control. If you find yourself lost, their team of event specialists can help. They handle everything from DJs, photo booths, event lighting, photography, videography, even efficiency. Give them a visit on the web and call today. Let's get planning. After Hours Events of New England. After Hours Events of NE.com. Don't forget to like and follow on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and be sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel all at After Hours Events of NE. That's After Hours Events of NE. Don't know what to do for your first dance? Is your future spouse having trouble picking a song to dance with their parent? Worry no more. I have the answer. Go to after hours events of ne.com forward slash contact guest that is c-o-n-t-a-c-t-g-u-e-s-t and you'll be able to listen to hours of music to help you select the right songs for your upcoming wedding again go to after hours events of ne.com forward slash contact guest do you want access to a stress-free wedding planning process then go to our website all the w's.atmosphere-productions.com and get my free report Eight questions you must ask a wedding professional before booking them. Get it today. That's all the W's.atmosphere-productions.com. Look for the free report and learn to shop like a pro from a pro and go from concern and worry to stress-free wedding planning. When your wedding entertainment has to have amazing music, be fun, organized, and professional, your choice has to be Atmosphere Productions. DJs, live musicians, custom lighting, and photo booths, as seen on the TLC TV series Four Weddings, winner of the Wedding Wire Couples Choice Award and DJ Times DJ of the Month. Experience the difference. www.atmosphere-productions.com That's www www.atmosphere-productions.com Happy holidays to you and yours. This holiday season, we'd like to thank everyone, especially our listeners who continue to support the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. You are the foundation of what we do each and every week. We'd also like to thank our sponsors for their continuing support. No matter how you celebrate this holiday season, we offer you love, peace, joy, and our best wishes. We want it to be filled with good health, happiness, and spectacular success. Listen in the new year, tell a friend, share our tips and suggestions, and join us in the stress-free wedding planning community because we'll have awesome new additions, features, and special guests. Check us out on social media by using our hashtag, hashtag stress-free wedding planning podcast. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Everyone is talking about the DJ Polly Show on YouShook.com. Hi, everyone. This is Keith Urban, and you're listening to the number one DJ on the planet, DJ Polly. What's going on, everybody? This is Charles. Hillary. And Dave. And we are Lady, Lady Annabellum. And you're listening to the number Number one DJ on the internet. It's DJ Polly, y'all. Hey, y'all. I'm Kelsey Ballerini, and you're listening to the number one DJ on the internet. It's DJ Polly, y'all. The DJ Polly Show on Youshook.com. We dare to be different. Join us and see for yourselves. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Welcome back to uh, the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Here with Carson Fitzner, and we're talking about drone photography and filmmaking. Give us your social media so that everybody can find you. So you can find us on Facebook at Fitzner Productions, LLC. Fitzner Productions, LLC on Facebook. 
Or you can find us on Instagram at Fitzner Productions. So when you go to a wedding and you want to do the drone photography, what's your process then from the time you get there to the time you have to bring the drone back down? Yeah, so we like to start off most of our wedding days with the drone videography. So that'll be like the first thing we do when we get there. Uh, the first thing is finding a spot that's safe for launching. We'll go either in the open field, patch of grass, anywhere that there's not too many people around. And that's when we'll get set up. And so, does that have to be a ways away from the venue or does it can be on site? So it can be on site. Okay. Again, when it comes to drone videography or any drone flight, the primary thing is just to make sure that you're you're being safe. Safety. So there's not too many regulations on exactly where you have to like launch or where mm -hmm. you can take off, but just having that common sense of, Hey, there's, there's kids coming in or there's, right. this is a parking lot. So people are going to be driving by, right. maybe not the best place to, right. to, to launch. And then from there, we set up our propellers, we launch our app and then we take off. And once we're up in the air, we get a few different shots. We go over the venue. We try to get some B-roll shots. Oh, those are know. beautiful when you come in down and you see in the venue from high. Oh yeah. Oh. So, and a lot of times when you're up there, you there's always the venue shots. If you're there's trees nearby, you're, you're getting the trees. Maybe there's a chapel nearby, and that's gonna be a great transition from the you know the B-roll to getting ready to getting into the ceremony. So having the idea of you know it's fun to fly a drone, but what yeah. story are you telling? Why are you getting certain shots? Right. A lot of people just go up, they throw it, and they fly it, and it's fun. But then you you know come back afterwards and. You're like, I just have a bunch of videos of trees. and <laughs> So you're creating you know. a storyboard ahead of time to kind of figure <laughs> yeah. out what you want to do. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what then are the shots that a drone filmmaker should take? Yeah, so I think it depends on the venue, and I think it depends on the story you're telling. For me, I always start off with the establishing shot. We use that a lot for our cinematic highlight reels. It's a movie, basically. You're, yeah. you're making a, a short yeah, movie. And what's the first shot you see in any movie? You have, you have the establishing shot to set the scene. Um, so for us, that's, you know, a slow pan in to, you know, maybe the trees release you as you, you go in, you pass the trees and then you see the venue oh, yes. and there it is. Like yeah. you open the scene, maybe you need some just extra shots of signage, um, anything that you can't reach with your camera. Those tree shots are always nice. You know, those are great fillers. Yep. And then anything else, you know, maybe there's a, you're at a farm and there's a silo um, where they did their first look. You get that shot so you can use it as a transition. I think drone shots are really good transition shots to be able to tell the story and flow smoothly from one space to the next. So are you out there with the photographer doing group and family shots as well? Yeah, absolutely. So those are great for like B-roll over top when a lot of times I love using those when someone's talking about their family or maybe it's a father speech and you put those family shots on top. We're there for, you know, six to 10 hours. Yeah. We're going to be shooting whatever we can. To yeah. get the most footage that we can. So then what happens next? You've taken the group shots uh, and you've got all the shots you need. A couple are heading in. Are you doing any end shots or any? What happens next? Yep. So uh, for drone regulations, you're you're not allowed to, to fly the drone um, at night. Oh. So unless you have uh, certain waivers or certain lights um, on your drone. Never knew that. Yeah, so you have to be careful when you're flying. I think between like 30 minutes before and after sunset, you're not allowed to fly. Um, wow. And then you need certain lights on your drone to fly at night um, after that. That's fascinating because if somebody hires somebody to do drone photography and their ceremony is at sundown, yeah. you're done. You're done. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you can't, can't do, do that. It, sorry. You have to look at like a, the drone as, you know, when you see an airplane in the, in the air, you, they have the red and the green lights, which tells you the directions. And some drones don't have those. Right. So you, you can't take a drone and not be able to see it and just throw it in the sky. Fascinating. <laughs> Isn't that? You know, if we don't have podcasts to explain this type of stuff, <laughs> nobody would ever know. But like, I've never known stuff like that. We've been in this industry, and I don't think we've ever heard anything like that. Yeah, That's pretty yeah. wild. That's pretty wild. Interesting. Once all that is done and you bring the drone down, is there a procedure for bringing the drone down? Yeah, so again, uh, safety is number one priority. Make sure that the, the space that you're landing in, usually, so all drones have a set home point. I should mention this, if there, if anything goes wrong during the flight, most drones have an automatic uh, set home button. Um, okay. So say we lose connection with the drone or it goes out of sight and we don't know where it is, you know, it would automatically come back to exactly where it was. That's amazing. <laughs> so Intelligent. That's, yeah, so um, procedures basically make sure the surrounding area is safe. And then set that home point, get it back, and then land it and 
get on with the rest of the day. Start Wonderful. Going. That's so exciting. And it should be exciting for our clients because now you're able to take that drone video and incorporate it in the wedding video. What t- sort of time period does that take? Because that's not just easy just slapping it together Mm -hmm. that's more editing of that and then editing it into the regular video i'm assuming it seems like you do a lot of editing i don't know (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's that's part of the job for all of our packages drone videography might be additional costs and that comes from again the risk of putting air having the insurance having the the license just having that experience you need to know what you're doing when you're flying the drone um so that's where those extra costs might come from um but as far as once we shoot we bring it down and then there's the the micro SD card that goes in all the drones. Ah. Um, so you take that out, put it in a, a little filler SD card and, you know, download it just like any other footage. Back it up. Yeah. Back it up. Back yep. it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so just like with an airplane, you know, it needs to be checked all the time for mechanics. What do you do with a drone? Drones, you need to, obviously, your pre-flight check maintenance to make sure that everything's good. Um, so luckily with technology, uh, you just go on the app and okay. once you turn it on, it'll give you your instructions of, Hey, how's the motor running? And then how the propeller, like all that stuff you'll be able to see on the app. But apart from that, it's just having the knowledge of how to store your batteries, how to store oh. at correct temperatures. Yep. There's different temperatures, which aren't safe. If it's too hot, um, the battery could explode, mm-hmm. which is not good. Yep. Too cold could freeze it and you could you know, lose the charge of all your batteries. Um, so having that knowledge of how to correctly maintain it is important as well. So putting the batteries in the freezer is not a good thing to try to <laughs> prolong life? No, <laughs> it's not. You know, you're not throwing the, the meat in the freezer. It, it, it's a battery. According <laughs> to my kids, that's how it works. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, thank you, Carson, for coming by again. We do appreciate you coming and talking about drone photography. And for the final time, give Give us your social media. You can find us on Instagram at Fitzner Productions, or you can find us on Facebook at Fitzner Productions LLC. And then if you want to contact us or look at our portfolio, you can go to FitznerProductions.com. And I definitely encourage folks to get a drone for their wedding. It's it's fascinating, and it'll excite and uh, make your video unique. It really adds something to it. Oh, it really does. It really definitely. adds to the whole storyline. It's great. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Remember those questions I asked earlier? Why is drone photography important in today's wedding filmmaking? Why is weather so important? Why is FAA approval important? Why is liability insurance important? Knowing what your drone photographer is doing and how makes planning your wedding easy and relieves the stress of planning your wedding day. So there you have it. We have just shared with you exactly what a wedding drone photographer does and how it affects your wedding. You also learn what questions to ask, what you can do, and what actions you can take immediately. Now, as you spend the next week planning your wedding, if you want me, Sal, and our community of stress-free engaged couples and wedding experts to answer any wedding-related questions, then join us over in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group. Once you're in, go ahead and share your concerns and worries, and we'll let you know if you're on the right track or if there are some things you should work on. The link to join us is in the show notes of this edition, or go to Facebook and search for the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Community. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast is produced and copyrighted by Atmosphere Productions in association with After Hours Events in New England.